All right. Here we are, another week around the trash fire. Your host, Matthias, so long with the boy. John. Quite a, quite a week. Quite a week if you're a chaos fan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As we get closer and closer. Just, I don't know. There's a lot. Obviously, of course, GW not keeping a good tight lid on their, uh, their leaks. A lot of leaks have come out as well. Yeah. But that just that seems while. to be expected. Right. It's been that way for a long while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been it's pretty bad. But it's still interesting stuff nonetheless. And then what? 30k came out, right? 30k did come out. So you got that? Oh yeah. Definitely uh, gonna go over that in the hobby hobby section. Yeah, and then I can't think of anything else, so let's just jump into it, shall we? Alrighty. So first, you know, usually we start with the Sunday preview, but we're gonna change it up here. Let's start with the Necromunda news, where uh, they're saying you'll be able to build whatever vehicle you want, which uh, I actually am a little happy with, because it kind of reminds me of the old uh, looted battle wagons that you could do for orcs. Yeah, I do like how it lets you use the jeans current gene sealer vehicles i think that i think that's pretty neat mm -hmm. but uh you could just make your own vehicle you don't have to just use the gene stealer cold ones either you just have to uh, classify let's... it um how then you can build one from scratch uh, oh i guess so, yeah you, you pick, can. pick a chassis size yeah, yeah, yeah um and but typically yeah you uh, they they use the the Necromunda model, sorry, the Gene Serum models as like a base, but yeah, it could kind of look whatever like whatever it wants. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how uh, accurate it would be if you had a, oh, uh, what is it, a Rhino, converted Rhino in there, but nonetheless, you could have it if you really wanted to, as long as it has the right classifications, and it. Uh, I like it. I think we're gonna see a lot of uh, creative stuff happening with the the vehicles. I, agree. I think it's a it's a neat kind of way to, um, yeah, just kind of have have more creativity and customization, which is what Necromunda really excels at. Yeah, well, it's definitely for the people who are good at conversions, all that other good stuff. Unlike me, yeah. I, I cannot do that. But we get. I thought that was pretty exciting news. There's not really anything else to this article other than it talking about uh, the different upgrades you can give it and some of the classification of the vehicle. You know, heavy, light, medium. Give it some extra armor, some escape patches, some plasma coil engine. I'm sure it'll be weird and wacky stuff that'll happen. Like in a normal. Necromunda game. But other than that, that's not, that's all for Necromunda. Uh, moving on to Warzone Nephilim. Nephilim. Uh, this isn't out yet. This comes out this week, right? I guess so. Was it up for pre-order? I think it was. I think it was up for pre-order. So... Uh, it's going over the stuff. It's going over the secondary objectives. Changing. You know. Obviously rebalance like every season. Like they promised they were going to do. And then of course. The, the, the one that everyone knew about. The command point change. Which uh. It's interesting. So you're going to be getting command point in your opponent's. Uh, command phase as well. Yes. That I didn't expect. I thought it was like two for your commander. But now it's one in your phase and then one in his phase. Kind of deal. It's definitely going to change it up. Especially with the low amount of CPU that we're getting now. Not being able to stack a uh, 
uh, what what was that uh, Blood Angel Captain called? The Smash Captain? The Smash Captain. No longer be able to make a Smash Captain anymore. Gear them all up at the beginning of the game by spending all your command points. You can make one. It'll just cost like 3 CP instead of 0. It costs all your CP? Or Because you need one for a Warlord trait and then one for a Relic. So... Down to four. So the, uh, you're down to four. So you can still make one. It just, it makes you, it, it's not a default option because you have less CP to start with. You can't just be like, oh, I'll just, um, I'll just mindlessly give my, um, my Warlord the best stuff and then go on my merry way. You really got to think about it. It's more like give your Warlord the best stuff and then give your next character the second best stuff. Yeah. To cut down on all that. Although it's interesting because it's unclear how this works with name characters because name characters, if they're the warlord, they have to take a warlord trait. So I'm not sure if that it forces you to pay for it. You know, if you take Heldbrecht or Vec, not Vec, or um, Eldrad or something, do you have to pay a CP to use them if they're your warlord? Uh, I don't think so. I think, I mean, unless I'm reading this wrong. Well, it says use this stratagem when you must run mustering your army. Mm. So like, if you're stuck a warlord trait, or after selecting a warlord, if you're this character, a different terrain, a warlord trait for them. Players must now also pay a command point for their first warlord trait relic, etc., etc. Huh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, it'll go into more detail uh, in the book. Because, you know, sometimes in these previews, they like to cut a few things. All right, let's see if any of the reviews have it. But, uh, yeah, I didn't read that. I didn't read that carefully. I thought that was just like, oh, if you want to give your, if you want to give another character another warlord trait, it's gonna it's gonna cost you one. Now it's just in the main book. I know... No, 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 it's not. It's your first your first warlord trait has to be paid for. You don't get a free warlord trait anymore. Yep, yep, I understand it yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So that that's a big deal because, right, like 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 you mentioned earlier, now you really gotta gotta think about it. You can't just mindlessly give a warlord trait anymore. Hmm. It'll be interesting. I, I'm gonna say this. I think the command point change is gonna be a very healthy change for the game. I I agree because I mean, unless I'm playing my Dark Eldar, a lot of my armies I still have a lot of CP, and it's just so easy to generate CP now, like Eldar. They have a spell that can generate it. I'm sure there's, I know there's a space ring chapter. I can't remember which one can do that. You got Tau, uh, ethereals that can generate an additional command point. I mean, there's just so much. And then there's the relics where, you know, if you spend a CP or your opponent spends CP on a six, you get another, you get a CP. Just so many ways to generate CP in the game. So I think this will be interesting. But other than that, I think it's pretty much it. That was pretty much the big news. Everything else is just, uh, you know, wait till the book comes out kind of deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, I look forward to this because I hope. I haven't looked at the secondaries yet. I won't. Won't lie about that, but I hope this is good. Command points, I I'm happy for. Uh, moving on to the next thing. Uh, probably the smallest bit news here. Uh, Heresy Thursday. I uh, just quickly go over. You get the the uh, uh what are they called? Dark Angel heads. Yeah, these are way cooler than the other two they revealed, I in my opinion. Well, I mean, 
I mean, I like the Imperial Fist, but as you pointed out, you know, they looked more Black Templary than actual Imperial Fist. Uh, these, yeah, those, these look okay. Yeah, those one, the Fist ones I like, but yeah, it, it'll be weird if you're replacing all your regular attack squads with those heads because it has the Templar Cross, which is a veteran thing. Mm -hmm. So it kind of limits your, your narrative choice of using the heads. These, I feel, are more generic. And I can see a whole Dark Angel army with all this, all the attack squads and heavy support squads are wearing this kind of helmet, which is super dope. Yeah, they did a better. They did a better job with the Dark El, uh, Dark Elves, the Dark Angels. Yeah, I agree. I think these look a lot, you know, more generic but more thematic than the others. Too bad the Forge World. Yep, which means I'm never getting them, even though. I was never going to pay for them, so. Yeah, the heads alone are $23. For 15 heads? 12 heads. It says 15 plus on the box. Is that, is that something else? No, it's the age. Oh, that's uh, the, the age? Yeah. Yeah, 11 Legion specific upgrade parts. Oh, actually, just 11, sorry, 11 heads, not even 12. 11 heads for $23. Oh, that's a that's a steep price. I mean, that's Forge World for you, but right, yikes. Uh, well, moving on to our favorite Sunday preview. Chaos, they're coming. Yes, Chaos Space Marine, just the Codex, just the Codex, which is fine. Uh, surprisingly. No, uh, no exclusive box to go with the for the book, like we predicted. I don't know a month or two ago. We thought they were gonna do like a special edition box where they'd have all the chaos stuff in there, like they did with the Black yeah, Temple. That, that, that was surprising that they didn't do that because I'm trying to think what what came out in June. It was just specialist games, right? Pretty Special much. And, and, and 30k. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. But. Yeah, so we're just. Chaos players, you're finally going to get your book. You're finally going to get two wounds. And some updated rules. And you're no longer going to die to just normal. Lasgun bolt shots. Thank goodness. Unless it's a horde of conscripts. Then, you know, you, you're probably going to die. Because that's a lot of shots. But there we go. We got no, that. It's okay. You won't. Someone did the math, and the 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 Imperial Guard shooting blob isn't that good. <laughs> it's just volley of shots. Yeah, it's just like, oh, who cares? Because they'll just make their saves. True. And then we got the combat patrol, which we talked about when it was first leaked, way back when. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got the obvious dice, which look awful. The data cards, which... Yeah, <laughs> yeah the dice are awful. Could have done, like, black and gold. That would have... That would have been more Black Legion than whatever these dice are supposed to be. Uh, you got yeah. the... Yeah, I just, I just, I mean, I've said this before on cast. I just don't like the flat background. I think the design of the the pips are good, simple pips and a logo, but I feel they could have been more, I don't want to say excited, or, or they should just look more exciting, the background. It's just so, it looks really mad right now. Yeah, it'll, it looks bad. Black and gold probably would have been a better choice. I don't think there's any black and gold dice. That I can think of. Red and black, though, I, I can think of a couple. So, I uh, dropped the ball there, of course, but that's whatever dice company they're using, or if it's just them, uh, really dropping the ball with these dice. Especially it's since a, they're spending $35 on them. I think it's a different company. I, I don't think they make their dice in house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they do that. GW, find a new creative guy, new creative team for your dice, because these ain't it. This yeah, is, these this 40k is dice 
have been disappointing recently. Uh, the data card box uh, might just be the picture, but it looks like a pretty hefty box here. Yeah, it does. Maybe there's a lot of new cultist stuff or something. Well, when we get there, we'll get there. Because there, there's a lot of bunch of new stuff they're getting. Uh, let's see, you get the K uh, Space Marine signed art piece, I assume. That's for what? Buying the book, the new codex? I usually have a bundle which is everything on sale that's new, and it has this as a bundle. Hmm. Available with selected online bundles. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, moving on. Chaos. Uh, not chaos. Uh, Gene Sealer Cult. Uh, Combat Patrol. God, it's been. Did they come out December? Or did. January. January, yep. Or no, December, December, the army. God, it's been six months, and they're just wow. now getting their combat patrol. Um, I'm trying to look at this. I don't think the aberrants are that good right now. I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I fought Gene Steeler Colts, and I think I've only fought them once. I don't. I don't think the aberrants are that good right now. Uh, everything else in this box looks pretty solid. It's also great for Necromunda. Lots of Necromunda, lots of some people. some conversions for Chaos Cultists. I mean, Gene Sierra Cults is like the perfect conversion box for whatever yep. you want to use it for. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I even. Body squad of uh Gene Sierra Colts just to use as some Chaos Cultists. That was yeah, they work really well with some head swaps. Yeah, they do. Head swaps. So we got them. Uh, the Horus Heresy. Uh, the books coming out on their own finally. Yep. For those I who want didn't... to buy the left one. I'm so tempted to buy the limited edition one because it looks like a black book. Mm -hmm. So I'm like. Uh, will look good in my collection. Maybe I'll get it. Go for it. Have a nice, nice row of books for everyone to look at. Yes, 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 yes. Got that. We got the uh, uh, Mark Six Tactical Squad. Yeah, eighty bucks for this. Pretty good. It's a lot of Marines. Twenty Marines. Well, I mean, it was eighty bucks for the other, yeah, uh, marks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I still say it's a good deal. 20, 20 marines for 80 bucks. Yeah, $4 per model. It's pretty good. When right now you can get 10 for 60? 50. 50? So for yeah, an extra for 30 you get an 80, so you, you know. Yeah. I just I think you're just limited in the weapon options, right? Yeah, it's all bolters here. Which is fine, because, I mean, if you're taking... In 40k, at least, if you're taking first burn Marines, they're usually just going to be bolters anyway. Yep. But if you got that, that artist uh, touch, you know, conversions, and you bought the sprues, you uh, can make them whatever you want. Devastator yeah, squads. A of, yeah, a lot of conversion material here. Especially, yeah, if you get the heavy weapon... Great, you can make some vet squads, you can make some 40k marines. Yeah, good deals. Okay, moving on. We got uh Gregor Fellhand, I assume was part of uh Burning a Prospero. Yep, now he's out on his own after several years. <laughs> uh so Praetor and Chaplain. Yeah, for 30k. These are from Betrayal at Calf, and now you can get them on their own. I mean you could have you could have always this is a rebox. They had this for sale for a long time. This is just a rebox of the kit. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. Uh, and then some Sons of Horus and Imperial Fist dice. See? These? N maybe not the Imperial Fist, but Sons of Horus? I like those dice. The, even though... I mean, it could just be the picture. But they kind of look... It looks a little hard to read. But, you actually, know, it yeah, still looks actually, more... Than that. It looks nice. Yeah, it's better than the Cast Marine ones for sure. But yeah, the Sons of Horus one, I feel like the back. I'm so picky with these. 
because now the background is is too busy in my opinion. I I, I feel that maybe the pips could have been a different color. The pips or definitely brighter, should have been a different color. Gold. Yeah. I would I'm... pick them up if it wasn't for the fact that it's 19 dice and a scatter dice that annoys me. Yeah, if they oh, change maybe. the pips, it would look better cuz I mean, I'm looking at the scatter die and I'm looking at the the eye of Horus here and yeah. I can like barely see that. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with the Imperial Fist dice. I'm look I mean, the black dots look nice, but then when you look at the Imperial Fist symbol, like I can barely see that I symbol. Barely, I wonder if it's better under bright lighting because it's translucent. So, yeah. But other than that, I mean, would I pick these dice up? No, but I mean, they look better than the plain 40k dice we've been receiving. Yeah. <sighs> so moving on from that, Black Library, we got Pale King Limited Edition. Uh. Right Yep, Martarian. It's a nice looking cover. I always want to pick up the special edition books because they always look so cool. Yeah, a lot of them are really cool. But then I'd feel guilty because then we just sit there. Just yes. collecting dust. Because you don't want to read it because it's too nice to be read. Yeah. Just a nice set piece. Uh, And then my boy Ariman, he's getting getting a couple reprints here. So he's getting his audiobook, digital book, soft cover. He's getting another book on MP3. So you know I'm gonna be picking these up and oh, yeah. reading them. Are... And then Chaos Space Rain e shorts. Have you uh these are just online exclusive stories? Have these been yeah. released before, or are these uh, new? I don't even know. They're kind of random. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I, don't, I have, haven't really heard of these. The authors aren't too exciting, so... Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, these are just the normal chaos raids. These aren't the... I say normal, but, you know, not the demon-infested ones, it looks like, except for Perfect Union. I think would probably be Volgrim's Emperor's Children people. Yeah. But everyone else just looks like a normal renegade Chaos Marines. Well, interesting stuff there. Uh, let's see, we got the Night Lord's Omnibus. In Mr. French. This is probably the best Chaos Space Marine books or are the best Chaos Space Marine books. If I mean, I really like the Black Legion stuff, but it's very historical. Like, this is how the, the Black Legion formed. But this one is just, here's a really, really, really good story about Chaos Space Marines doing Chaos Space Marine things. So... Focus on the Night Lords, no less. Yeah, recommended read for anyone who likes Chaos Space Marines and just likes good books. Ah, but this is this is just for French. I didn't see that French yeah, symbol you, there. Yeah, you, you can get it for... You can get the English copies right now. If you can find them, they're usually out of stock. But, yeah. That's good. And then, let's see, for good old Warhammer Plus, uh, 30k Battle Report, which not too interested in, and how to do smoke effect for Masterclass Painting. All right. Well, it's uh, definitely jam-packed. Another jam-packed uh, Sunday preview. Last week was jam-packed as well, so... Now that they got rid of all that 30k, to start to, they're starting to pump everything out. Yep. Cause I'm sure this week they'll announce a pre-order for all the Chaos Space Marine stuff. Yeah, the cultists and the possessed and all all that good stuff. Yep, yep. And speaking of chaos, got some Trader Legions to talk about. Which I'm glad. I'm glad the the legions are getting love here. Uh, so starting with the good old legion trade for the Black Crusade. Uh, and they got the combat attrition minus one whatever you know. I 
don't get affected by combat attrition. Standard space range stuff. But uh, what else have they got? They got the added one to the hit roll with their range attacks. As long as they were the closest uh, eligible target. Or you charged. Or you charge, yes. That's, that's if you do the melee. So I think the, this will make them a... This definitely makes them a lot more deadlier, especially if you wanted to take some Havocs. Getting that plus one to hit, hitting on twos. As long as it's the closest target. These guys are going to be uh, brutal. Especially in melee, because you, your combat units want to be charging anyway. So you're getting a further bonus for charging. Super good. Yep, deep strike a bunch of uh, Terminators into someone's back line. Because, I mean, let's be real here. Terminators, they're stupidly good. Everyone who has Terminators, is it's stupidly good. Yeah. Ten man with just normal storm bolters, forty shots. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a unit surviving. I mean, uh, granted, you probably want to go for the charge, so you know, just deep strike yourself to where you have options. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be good. Uh, word bearers are what, whatever. It's not, not too crazy. I guess if you wanted to give it to a, like a flying demon prince, move uh, 14 inches plus one strength attacks and wounds. Could be good. Other than that, it's kind of whatever. The four Especially plus. Especially because you, you can't take a Chaos Sword on jump pack anymore. Yeah. I mean, the four plus invul save would be great if it worked for everything and not just range attacks, but. Uh, for this World War trade so far, uh, not Im not impressive. Yeah, not worth the one CP, I think. Unless you're building towards it. Yeah, but we'll have to wait and see because. And the article doesn't give us too much. Night Lords. Uh, pretty much just, uh, a smoke screen, minus one to hit, from all attacks, but only in shooting. Good. Pretty good. One CP for minus one to hit. I like it. Yeah, it's good. It's good if you're going into heavily sh uh, whatever unit you need needs to survive a shooting phase. Terminators. <laughs> oh yeah. Iron Warriors. Uh, they're okay. I mean, they definitely are playing into the cultists, but. I don't I don't know if any I don't know if cultists will be as good. But we'll see. Uh, but basically oh wait no. I got confused with something else, sorry. That's later on. Um They get to blow up objectives. That's what they get to do for a secondary objective. Yeah, it's kinda cool. Yeah, uh I, I mean I don't play magic often. But when I did play Magic, I liked to, to just be able to remove stuff off people's fields with just a card. Or if you if you played Legends of Rune Terra, I like to play the uh the plunder deck where I steal people's cards from their deck. This is pretty much how I see that, you know, you just go up and just be like, I'm gonna put C four on this objective right here and then blow it up so no one gets it. I think it's fun. Yeah, it's pretty thematic too for Iron Warriors. It's kind of cool. Yep. So, it's an interesting one. Will it be taken? Mm, I guess it'll be... I guess it'll depend on how much uh, Nephilim changes up the objectives in the map. Uh, I mean, if I have to go off previous experience, uh, it wasn't too much change from... Oh god, what was the first one called? Before Knockman? Knockman? I don't know. Whatever, whatever one was before Knockman. There, that one in Knockman wasn't too much change in terms of map, but uh, Nephilim could probably change it up a bit. So we got that. Alpha Legion. Uh... 
pretty much just stealing someone's someone's uh, stratagem and being able to use it for themselves. I don't know, pr pretty pretty alpha legion, I guess. Just a relic, though. So I don't know. It's very situational. I'm sure you can get away with it in some some meta breaking uh, lists out there, but I don't know if you would want to take this in your Actually, normal I think it's game. Pretty, it's pretty strong, especially with the new changes to how C how you get less CP. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because you get one CP per turn, right, or per round. And you're effectively reducing that. And you, there's no rains or anything. It's just one when the enemy uses one. Oh, okay. I misread this. Game. I misread this. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. For some reason in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm using this relic to steal like one of their stratagems and use it. Okay, no. I see it. I read it more carefully now. It's increase it by one. Uh, yes, this yeah. is incredibly powerful. I forget who it was. It was Dark. Was it Dark Eldar? They had something like that where uh, Agents of Vect? Agents of Vect, yep. Was it? Was it the new Agents of Vect? Agent, yeah. Where it increased uh, one by one CP. The entire turn. It's like a. Or was it an item? I can't remember. It's been so long since I played my Dark Eldar. Pretty much the strategy of it's like pay a CP and the enemy needs to pay an extra CP to use the stratagem. Yeah. Now, Agents of Vect cancelled. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that now. Uh, I don't know. I don't... I just remember that they did have something. Maybe Agents of Vect change. Again, it's been a long time since I played my Dark Eldar. But I remember them do did have something because I used it against Travis's uh his uh World Eaters army where he had the corn berserk or Lord of Skulls being able to shoot. He used that one stratagem to increase their blitz of skill by like one or something like that. Or gave him double shot something that he would use every turn. So I remember just using it against him on that and crippling his army because he couldn't do it all the time. But uh, yes, this would be good. Um, question is, yeah, yes, I guess you got to be Alpha Legion to use it. So it'll be interesting to see how this works. And then we got Emperor's Children, Unbound Arrogance, and I was hoping they would show off some new Noise Marines, but. I guess, I guess not. I guess that's not going to be a thing. But uh, when I read this World War trait, the first thing I thought of was, this sounds like some Age of Sigmar stuff right here. Because you have to pick a die, basically a D3, and you just put that in your hand, and you're, you and your opponent then lift your hand off that dice and if your dice is not the same as your opponent's that's how many extra attacks your warlord gets so reading that i'm like wow that's kind of reminds me of just uh some age of sigma hand in the gash pick it put a die in your hand and your opponent guesses it kind of deal oh i see i see like old AOS stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It makes it more interesting, but I don't know if it'll be taken, but... I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? You're I the mean, chaos guy. I'm trying to think, like... You'd probably pick either one or three, because you pick two... Well, it's actually interesting, because if you pick a two... You have two thirds chance to get plus one attack, but if you pick one, you could get. Actually, picking one or three might be better because 
it's actually kind of like it. There's some little mind games going on. It does slow the game down a bit because you know if if they pick up if I pick a one, and they pick a three, I get plus two attacks, and it's because it's, if if you're the chaos player, you're you you should not pick a two. You should pick a one or a three, and then your opponent has to decide: does he want to risk giving you more attacks? So I actually kind of like it. It's kind of interesting. Oh, it's definitely a mind game. Yeah. It just reminds me, like I said, Hand of Nagash and some other early AOS stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, w- I would plan, if you're using this, I would plan to just use it for the plus one attack. Because on average, you'll get plus one attack from this, which isn't a lot. Yeah, I mean, depending on your how killy the Warlord is supposed to be, that plus one might make the difference. That's true. One attack could, could make the difference. You're right, you're right. Okay, and then I think that's it. Oh, and you know, at the bottom here they mention that Death Guard and Thousand Signs already have their special codex. Must be a Primarch model privilege. Might be uh might be hinting at Ingron, maybe. Seeing how world eaters are are not in the book. Yep, because they you know, they're getting a codex release. That we know. We already know they're getting a codex release. Right, we know that, but from our privilege. I mean, we 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 kind of know they're gonna get Angron. Like, if world leaders come out with no Angron, there people would be mad. Like, I I I think that would actually hurt sales significantly. Ah, uh, people are gonna be mad regardless if Angron came out or not. I think more people would be mad if he didn't come out because you're you're releasing, you're hyping, you're building the hype for a Chaos Legion, following in the shoes of the two Chaos Legions with codexes and Primarchs, and not having a Primarch, yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, I would be angry. I don't even play the army, and I would never yeah, play the I, army. I would be upset, because it's like, come on, guys, really? Missing the ball. Well, that's not all the chaos we have, either. Oh boy, cultists. Cultists. Getting blessed by the dark gods. Uh, Here's the Iron Warrior one I was referring to. Uh, So this one, if your Iron Warrior Marines were to be shot at. Uh, if you had some Chaos Cultists nearby, you can use them as shields. Kind of reminds me of like the Grot Wall that used to happen in 7th edition. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So there's that. That's, you know... We'll see. I mean, Chaos Cultists are definitely more prominent in... The Chaos Space Frame book, then Death Guard and Thousand Sons. So this this could be something that's good, but as a Thousand Sons player, you know, there's really no reason to have any cultists in your army. Other than just like sit on this objective. Which is which everyone uses cultists for. Right. Uh, moving on to uh, word word bearers. I almost said world eaters. Uh, uh, I mean, basically, just empowers your cultist reroll charges for that unit. Each model you make can reroll attack hit rolls. I mean, if you're going against like Eldar, Tau, or Anything else that's toughness three out there, I guess could be good. Otherwise, I don't know why you would really be. Uh, I don't know why you would really want to empower uh, cultists. Seems that I don't know. I mean, I I don't really use cultists in in forty k, so I have no real opinion here, to be honest. I mean, I guess if you like cultists, it's it's a buff for cultists, right? And even if you play word bearers, word bearers love cultists, so. True. But we'll see. Like I said, once the rules come out, we'll know more of how where these stand. Uh, here's the alpha cult leader. Be able to add uh. uh add one to the attack and improve the armor penetration of uh, all attacks. By one, uh, kind of reminds me of the Zangor Shaman. 
uh, being able to empower, well, I mean, the Zingo Shaman was more like rerolls, but being able to add one and then add one to their uh, armor pen, it's not bad. It would actually make them more threatening, of course, unless they're going against like Space Marines. Then, uh, yeah. not going to do anything, anyways, but it's kind of what you expect with bare bone humans in the. Right. In this space. Uh, but. Again, that's that's gonna be one CP because that's a warlord trait, so a bit risky unless you're unless you're gonna go for an old cultist army, which I'm sure someone out there has attempted to do. There's always that one guy, just like in fantasy. There's always that one guy who wanted to do a thousand zombies for vampire counts. So why not do a thousand cultists just to fill the board up? And then I think that's oh nope. Then we get to the accursed horde, the uh, the new uh, variants of uh, cultists here. Uh, so they obviously won't be able to go into any transports. I don't think any cultists can go into transports, if I can recall. Can you confirm that, John? No, uh, cultists were never able to enter the like the rhinos, right? Uh, I I don't know. I've I've never used cultists. <laughs> Got it. I think they. I can't think of a reason why they wouldn't. I mean, unless it says ten cast space for me. I don't. I, I've never used cultists, so has it never been and something I even thought about. Well, with these guys, the cursed horde, you get two options. You can do. You can. Return up to three mutant models to the unit, or return one destroyed torment model to this unit. Full wounds remaining. So here's a nice uh, blobby unit you could probably field. Put them on an objective, and uh, they'll pretty much have to force them off. Yeah, you'd have to dedicate firepower to wiping the squad, which, depending on their defensive capabilities, may not be that hard in the current meta, to be quite honest. So, yeah, I mean, um, artillery did get nerfed, but you could still pull it off. Oh, absolutely. I think, especially again now in in looking at competitive forty k, the the amount of firepower people bring to the table. Yeah, these will just die instantly. Yeah. But as long as you still get one up there, I mean, returning three a turn, still pretty brutal. I I don't think so. Three a turn. So one guy's left, three come back. There's four guys now. Probably will die next turn. I think. Yeah, but. I, I think they'd be better as like a low squad because then you're forcing your opponent to wipe it as opposed to just killing a few guys every turn kind of thing. But even then, like you would just wipe the unit anyway. I don't know. I'm looking at these guys, and I think the the recursion mechanic is kind of cute, but I don't know. I think it's more like again, I don't know how these will fare, but they're more of just hold the objectives because I mean, you're not gonna send these guys really out to the front line too often unless you're, you know, got like the alpha cult leader and some other ways to buff them up to make them a little bit of a threat. No, I, I actually disagree. I think they'll be better as a as a moving up the board than holding objectives in the back, because once they're in combat, then you're forcing your opponent to fight them in combat or doing, doing some retreat shenanigans, etc. Mm. Uh, if you're holding objectives, they just like I don't see them any tankier than any other unit. Do you want to destroy holding objectives just because fire? It's forty k so lethal right now. I mean, this is a game where knights knights are terrible right now because you could easily shoot one off the board without trouble. I don't think these guys holding an objective will fare any better. I I do see some play as a as a unit that walks up to threaten like other enemy units. Well, I think now, who knows, the, right? Who knows what the points will be and what other rules they get. I think with the I guess it'll be legion specific, but I mean, getting these guys up with your uh was that Legion Iron Warriors and using that stratagem? Definitely a good call. 
that's all. Yeah, that's a good use for them is forcing them to shoot the cultists first, and which will regenerate wounds. I think it's been leaked, but uh, I think the normal Space Marine, Chaos Space Marine, is 18 points. So three points cheaper than a Death Guard and a Thousand Sun. Pretty but good. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll go up in points if you give them a mark. But we'll have to wait and see when that happens. Uh, but we can quickly get through this. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Mutant Rabble, basically fearless models. Don't really care too much for that. Uh, they kind of like Chaos Spawn. Uh, the next, the Cursed Cultists. Uh, given that this thing is armed with wings, I guess they're not all armed with wings, but uh, surprisingly that they're only movement 6, that they'd be a little bit faster. But they are strength 5 with 2d3 attacks and 3 wounds. So they could be uh, pretty menacing up there. Yeah, I think the there's no movement because only one model has wings. The rest of the, the unit doesn't have wings. Right. But yeah, the the sound line is 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 decent. I know if they have no involves, they're just gonna die. Well, of course they're they're well. I mean, they have to be demonkin, right? There's no way yeah, that they're not. They, they, they don't have, have the demonkin rule. Kind of evil, otherwise. Like without an invul, this unit is kind of useless. I would, it's, I would assume. At worst, six plus. At best, five plus. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's where I would put my money. And that's it for cultists. So overall, could be good. I know they're gonna get the same restrictions like uh, they do in Thousand Suns and. Uh, Death Guard, where you gotta have one for every one Astarte unit, you can get one cultish unit. But we'll see how it all goes. Because I think, I think the cultists could be good. I think the cultists will probably be better in the normal book than they are in the supplement books. Because you have a lot more options. Than the Death Guard and the Thousand Suns. And uh, so moving on to the final Chaos news that we have. It is the uh, the Chaos Doctrines. So moving on down here. Uh, first we got these... Let the galaxy burn, and pretty much any time you shoot a flame weapon, you get plus two to the attacks, which is nice. Uh, is it just uh, each time a model with each unit? So it's not just space marine. So I, I would assume with your vehicles, the uh, God, who has a flamer? The obliterators, the Wait, do obliterators have flamers? I don't know. I, I saw their leak rules, but I didn't see if they had a flamer or not. All right, well, I'm whatever. Sure anything anything with a flamer gets plus two. So you're at least minimally hitting three targets. So that's good. Not, you know, the best, but hey, it's something. It's kind of random. It's like, let the galaxy burn. Let's make that a rule, even though. <laughs> Flamers aren't really a chaos thing. Yeah. I mean, first there were a Sisters of Battle thing, and then there were an Orc thing, and then there were a Black Templars thing, another cat. They were also a thousand something. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Warp Flamers. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's neat. It'd be interesting if you could. Oh, actually, a rubrics with this would be would be kind of cool. Rubrics with that would be amazing. Yeah. I would start running a lot more flamers. Yeah, and uh, you do a Casmian army that could with the rubrics. Yeah, that would be pretty good. But here we go. Here's their uh, doctrines. I was not sure on how this works. It's a little weird, but 
I assume the turns aren't correlated with where these are starting. Or they're only deciding to show us three of these. No, oh. I think it's turn one, it's wanton destruction. Turn two and three, it's wanton massacre. Turn three and four is wanton slaughter. So turn two and three is when you get the plus one, this the the six to hit with rapid fire assault pistol and with melee weapons. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, so let's start with Wanted Destruction. Uh, very much any unmodified hit roll with a heavy weapon, rapid fire, or grenade, uh, scores an additional hit. It with the six, if you uh, if you roll a six to hit, you get an additional free hit, which is pretty cool. It's pretty much um, I think it's good. I was gonna say Veterans of the Long War. That is not right. No, it's a Death of the False Emperor. The there you go, Death of the False Emperor. Doctrine. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. And these don't stack, right? These are not a stacking ability? No, it's... Yeah, turn one, you get one okay. to destruction. Turn two and three, you get... Sorry. Yeah, turn one, you get destruction. Turn two, you get massacre. Turn three, turn three you, get, you slaughter. get massacre and slaughter. And turn four, you only get slaughter. All right. And so going with... One massacre, pretty much the same thing. Rapid fire, assault, and pistol. Additional hit, so just more, more shooting and combat oriented. Where the first it's one was, all these, yeah, heavy. all these are the hit. You get extra hits. Yeah. So, and then obviously the last one, wanton slaughter, assault, yeah. melee, automatic, plus one to hit or additional hit if any sixes are rolled. So, basically, you just your combat doctrines are all just generating additional hits. Yes, which is nice. Who doesn't like more Daka Daka in their life? And melee Daka. Oh yeah, this is this is gonna be great for uh. Chaos, because I know right now, <laughs> I know right now they're getting outgunned super hard. But I mean, that's just due to the fact that they are third to last on getting their book completely updated. But I think this will push them in a good direction. I don't know if you heard about the Lord of Skulls. No. Lord of Skulls is going up uh, like 120 points, I believe. So that'll oh. be interesting. Yeah, it's going to go from like 430 to 540, I think. Or 550, I can't remember which one exactly. But basically, if you're playing 2K, it's going to take up a quarter, over a quarter of your uh, your army list there. I wish Travis was here, because I know he likes to run the Lord of Skulls a lot. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's that going on. But, as a uh, Black Legion player, how do you how are you looking at these rules? How do you feel about them? They Everything that wounds. we looked at. That's all that matters. They have two wounds. You they can just copy paste the old codex, and they have two wounds, and I'd be happy. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure this like combat doctrine is a good addition, right? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. It's more rules. <laughs> I really 40k is so rules bloated right now. So, you know, I got my, my my so I got my data sheet right. I need to know. Got my legion rules. Got my stratagems. I got now this stuff. I gotta remember. Oh, every flamer has plus two. Oh, it's turn three. I get extra hit of a six. I mean, if you remember it. It's great, right? If if you have that system mastery of knowing that, okay, on a six to hit, it is an additional hit. Also, the the way it, it's 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 not it's how to say this the the wanton rules. I like it because it's not something that really screws you over if you forget about it. 
It's like, oh, whoops, I forgot that when I roll a six, and it's an extra hit. It's not like the Space Marine one where everything gets plus one AP. And if you forget, that's pretty big because you're missing out on a lot. But, right. you know, let's say you fired a squad and you forgot about Wanton Massacre. Like, oh, whoops, you, it, a sixth of your hits would have been affected on average, right? So it's not such a big deal. So in terms of just more rules to remember, this is the least, one of the more, less egregious ones. Like, I'm looking at the Tyranids, and it's like, oh, yeah, synaptic imperatives. Oh, my gosh. This is like two pages of rules on how synapse creatures can buff something half the board away. Stuff like that. So. Right. I get it. So, you yeah. just. It's nice, but you rather it it's just not be of... there so you don't have to. Re... It, so you don't it, have more rules to remember. It just, yeah, it's just more rules to remember. Yeah. I get you. I mean, it's like when I played my Craft World Eldar. Like, I blame it mostly on the fact that I don't play 40k as much as I used to. But it's always like, all right, start of the new uh, new round. I got to roll for my fate dice. Like, I forget that almost 80% of the time. Right. Which is not good. Because <laughs> you got to remember, it's, like, it's an important rule. It's important. That's... That fake dice uh, can sway some games. Yep. And it's like, oh, this really important save I need to make? Well, here you go. I just, I auto rolled a six. Screw you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, back to this codex, I get, as long as there's two wounds, I'm happy. <laughs> Anything else is, is a cherry on top. That's two the, wounds, the armor of contempt. I mean, yeah. Everything space else Marines are good. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I've seen Blood Angels place a lot. Armor of Contempt has placed Space Marines back on the board. But, yeah. you know, how Eldar Tyranids are still dominating the meta overall. Oh, well, I mean, Tyranids and Eldar, and I mean, that's just, that's just normal. Yeah, Knights are getting... Knights are another example of saying, oh, the new Codex is OP is, is not true, because Knights are I'm freaking terrible right now. I mean, that's just that's just the problem with uh, such a limited range of models, and just the fact that you have such limited models. Yeah, they hit hard, but you're hitting hard against one of like twenty units, right? And when, when yeah, I, I mean, there was a time where knights were OP, but just the state of the game right now yeah with a limited selection with with your sh with your army shtick being a bunch of big stompy robots that could that have a lot of health and do a lot of damage that's kind of it. it you don't have any shenanigans you you have no mobility you can't really hold objectives you're you're very one-dimensional yeah absolutely and because of your limited roster and the game you know now if the game favored big killy things that had high toughness or high defensive capabilities, you'd be doing well. And that happened in 8th edition. But now the game sweeps those armies off the table because of, of how lethal it is. So, yeah, good luck. Yep, it's all about it, having yeah. bodies. Yep. Bodies that do a lot of damage. Well, should we get to our final story here? Yeah. Our final story. Squats. He showed off more of the models. And uh, they're just not for me. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I was looking at these guys. If if I could play a squat army and have everyone have the helmet on, I could see myself playing it. Because the, the, the models with the helmet on, they look super cool. I really like the, the look of... Of the there's the sniper and then there's the guy with the I guess I don't know if it's a I think it's a regular no it's like a it's like a special fusion weapon. gun or something like that yeah with the helmet it looks cool as heck I I could see myself having that kind of army when I see the helmet on first thing that goes into my mind Starcraft, Starcraft. Marines. yep <laughs> Starcraft yep you're right Starcraft Marines so yeah it's 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 just not an army for me, but yeah. Uh, again, I would do it if everyone could have a helmet. If not, not for me. 
do not like door faces. The 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 sniper rifle looks cool though. I'm not gonna lie. I like I like the design of that. Don't know why yeah. you would put a rail rifle in the group, but whatever. Maybe yeah. they have something where they can shoot heavy weapons. Yeah. But here they are. They're we finally got the first box set of uh the Mer uh full ten. More to come because now. I guess you think Votan's gonna come out before IG in Demons? Yeah, absolutely. So we're saying August? Mm. Beginning of August? Yeah, August. I would see yeah, I agree, because July is gonna be more chaos and thirty K and I can see August being the squats of hey, maybe even early July or sorry, mid late July, early August. I can see that. Yeah, I think they would do what they're doing with the chaos right now, you know. Final final week. So say thirty first of July. They'll have the Sunday preview where they'll be like, Alright, it's time. It's time you guys can finally uh you'll be able to pre order this next week and then they'll come out mid August. Since it takes like two weeks. Yep. You think it's gonna be a box set though? I do think it's going to be a box set. It's a whole new army. I don't think they'd miss an up. We haven't had a new army come out without a box set. Since. I'm going to have to rely on your men and me. Or something. Hmm? Since like AOS 2.0 or something, we've always, every time there's a new faction, not an expansion to a faction, but a new faction, always been a box set. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. I mean, when they redid the whole Sisters of Battle, box set. yeah, the box set, so. Yep, every uh, Lumineth, new box set. Bone Reapers had a box set with Ogres. But also I play Black Templars, box set. True. But you don't think they're going to try to shoehorn them into fighting someone, right? That's a good question. I don't think so. So I think that it will be is a solo box set. A solo box set. It's a good. So yeah, it's an interesting question. It makes sense. I think personally, for a new army, I think putting everything into one big box with the codex because we know they're gonna put it, uh, some limited edition codex in there. I think would be the best bet. I think yeah. grouping them up with. I don't know. I'll just say Necrons would be a bad idea. Yeah, that would be odd. I said Necrons because that was like the first thing that came to my mind, but you know, if they grouped up with anyone, I, I think if they had to battle someone, it would have to be Tyranids. Yeah, I agreed. But I'm I'm hoping for the solo box set. I'm not gonna pick it up. I've already said that I'm not picking up another army ever again, but I hope it's a solo box set. Um, okay, uh, and that is it for the Warhammer news that we have. It's, anything else you want to add before we just jump into hobby rants? Um, not for Warhammer. No, no real news that I have heard of. For Warhammer. Yeah, um, hmm. let's see. I think the only rumors I've heard for Chaos Space Marines, besides the Lord of Skulls going up in points, is that the Demon Prince is actually going to go down in points. I think by like 10 points. So, you might, you might see more Demon Princes out there. Now that they're not gonna be now that they're not so expensive. Of course I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm pretty sure the Thousand Sun Demon Prince will still be very expensive just because of its psychic capabilities. But Demon Prince is rumored to be going down in points. Yeah, I saw the leaks for Chaos Space Marines, but I just don't play 40k enough, or I don't think I'm good enough to 
really tell if that's a good if that's enough of, of a cost change or if that's not enough i don't know i I've, I've never been that way honestly when i'm playing war games i i really can't tell if a point change is good or bad it's just so it's so minute to be quite honest yeah well i mean i think i think playing more competitively has really changed my perspective and mm -hmm. by that i mean like when i started going to like uh green towers and lvo you know i started noticing like wow because this went up by one point this unit is no longer viable competitively it's just it's just a weird thing it's just a weird thing to notice right and i mean that's why i like my eldar my craft world eldar like i don't play that army super competitive i play the army because i like playing the aspect warriors i think they're cool and they look cool but when i'm playing a game and i'm getting like shot off the board completely and not being able to do anything it's just like why why am i playing this right and i mean it's also just a community of people i play with right yeah that that makes a huge difference the people i play with are how do i say this mid to high competitive because you know we all like to go to the tournaments and we all want to you know win the tournaments as well so it's not really a like casual kind of thing right. i can't just be like yeah i'm gonna take all these horrible units and just have fun with it my brain my brain don't work like that anymore and i miss it just a little bit but maybe even for like 30k i have a hard time seeing if the unit's completely useless like, there's only one unit in 30k that I actually think is... Okay, there's two units that I think are just terrible. And the first one is the, the Dread Claw Drop Pod, because it doesn't have any assault vehicle rule. So you're paying 125 points to deep strike a unit. <laughs> like, that's not worth it. Wait, why you know? is it the Drop Claw if it doesn't have any, like, combat capabilities? Uh, It, it can do, like, D6 Strength 6 hits or something like that. It's, it's not worth the cost. It's just... It's... It's so blatantly expensive for what it does. Okay. Um, and not again, not having assault vehicles, so you can't charge out of it if, when you deploy. So what's the point? Okay, you okay again? You could yeah, you could deep strike a squad and shoot something, but it's a lot of points. Yeah. To deep strike something, I guess if you really want ten multi melta marines or sorry, ten melta gun marines to delete a Kratos or a super heavy, but even then. I feel like you just oh, take a normal drop pod, right? Get another drop pod, or like a storm eagle or something. What's up? I feel like you just get a normal drop pod, right? If you want to, well, you can't not in thirty k. It, it's it's hard to get a normal drop pod. You gotta so you can't in thirty k. You can't take a drop pod unless your whole army takes drop pods. Oh, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. So yeah, yeah. But even then, like the dread claw is just not. It's just so expensive. I'm sure you could have some use with it, but. I I generally and and that's why it's borderline kind of bad to me. But a unit that's really bad, I for sure know is bad in thirty k is a multi multa heavy support squad. So it's ten space marines with a multi multa, and it is bad because it's ten guys with multi multas, and if you move, you hit on sixes. And it's like, oh, then I'll just shoot, stand back and shoot. Well, no, because the gun has a range of twenty four inches and. The Melter rule requires you to be within 12 inches. So the, you get a bonus against vehicle, vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, if you are within half range. Otherwise, you don't get any bonus. It doesn't do D6 damage or anything. It's just a strength 8 gun. So, yeah. Unless you're playing Death Guard, it's pointless because you're hitting on 6s. And, okay, you put on transport. Well, if you disembark, it kind of moving. So you disembark, you're hitting on 6s. And then you die next turn because no one's going to want you to do that, right? So they're going to shoot that squad. And it's not, not any more survivable than any, any other Space Marine squad. But other than that, most units I'm you could kind of find a use for. 
No, I don't know about hyper competitive 30k because that meta isn't really PSA from John. If you see people talk about competitive for 30k, I think it's pointless because right now Knights and Mechanicum and Custodes aren't out yet, and they're gonna be out in two, three months time. So and those guys were kind of meta defining last edition. Because Neo you know, Knights had armor values and health points. Mechanicum is an army of completely composed of monstrous creatures with stupid amount of firepower. And Custodes are another multi-wound army that has a lot of firepower and is really good in melee. So, and those armies will definitely shift, hardcore shift the meta. Because right now, when you look at 30k Marines, you kind of think, oh, this will be good against other space Marines, or oh, this will be good against the Sparta. And it's like, okay, cool, you have all, all comers lists, competitive all comers lists. Like I saw this guy in a Facebook group talking about a list, and it was a Thousand Suns list with Terminators, Magnus, and had some 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 tanks. And it's like it's competitive, and I'm like, I I don't know, I don't think so, because in theory, a knight list would stop this in two turns. <laughs> a Mechanicum list could, because of a force weapon changes, a Mechanicum list would also smash this list. Now this is probably be really good against Space Marines, but I don't know how it's going to fare against Custodes, you know, so. Well, yeah, so. End of the year, we'll find out. End of the year, we'll find out, right? Right. And so, I mean, yeah, in terms of, that's my competitive rant, where it, well, I'm playing 30k, it's it's hard for me to to really tell what's hyper-competitive. Because most, again, most things have a use, and to the the big dogs aren't out yet because I think mechanic and custodians and knights are the big dogs. N knights for sure. If I was going to bet money right now, what the strongest army in 30k would be competitively, it would be knights straight up because again, <laughs> it's an army of knights with hull points and armor values and 30k isn't as lethal as 40k when it comes to deleting big things. So, Well, uh, to go back to your competitive points, do you think there'll still be a uh, a rise in competitive with this new edition? Now that you yes, played a little I, bit of it, I I haven't played competitive. I played the game, and we can talk about more about hobby rents. But I and you know, Art of War put out a video on on ranking the legions, and I watched it, and they were kind of terrible because <laughs> they didn't really. They were like, "Oh, word bearers are top tier because they have a lot of units." It's like, also they got a lot of rules wrong, which annoyed me. Whatever. No, but whatever. Isn't that that it? Reason why it sucked, because that's, they got the rules wrong. So that's every Warhammer channel, though. I mean, I, we we've gotten rules wrong. So right, we we don't we're not putting out tier lists and saying you know Sons of Forest are super good because the reaction lets you counter fire a unit and 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 they die before they shoot you when in actuality they shoot before they die or shoot back before they die. So it's a huge shift in how the rule works and how you're judging it. But no, you're right. A lot of Warhammer channels do get the rules wrong, but that also means that then their rankings won't be as accurate because they're, they're getting rules wrong. Right. But but I do think there will be competitive 30k just because comp any game has a competitive scene, and you know 30k is big enough. I think 30k is definitely as bigger than War Machine. Maybe coming up the popularity of Star Wars Legion because Star Wars is Star Wars. But anyways, yeah, it, it's gonna have a competitive scene. Am I gonna play in it? I wanted to, and then I, you know, I drank my coffee and realized that knights are going to dominate the meta like like they did before. It's no question knights will dominate the meta. And if it's not knights, it's going to get skewed by Mechanicum, which I do play, so maybe I'll play Mechanicum. I don't know. I don't really know. Well, I'm interested to see how it goes, because, I don't know, I think, I think uh, definitely with the box set, but I think uh, 30k... Probably got a huge boost in players. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I run a Facebook group, a Southern California 30K Legion, and we got a lot of new players coming in. So. Yeah, so, I mean. I mean, there's a lot of people upset with the current 40K. You know, there's, there's always those posts that people are jumping ship and GW is a sinking ship right now and 40K is just awful. You know, you always you always get those people making videos like that. Right. So now, Yeah. So, you know, I think 
30k just until 40k like gets its no. stuff together uh um, yeah, yeah. could be the new thing i will say this if you are gonna play 30k because you don't like 40k right now don't do it the game is not for you <laughs> 30k is it's overwhelming if you've never played it and if you don't read if you don't have an idea of a vision for how your army will be because if you build a 30k army based on the rules it's just so overwhelming because it's like and there's so many people asking what are arm terminator squads like i don't know because there's so many options like each terminator can get a combi weapon or a combi bolter or a volkai charger in addition to that they can all get a power fist or a chain fist or power weapons and if you pick a power weapon, do you stick with a power axe, power maul, stuff like that, you know? So whatever the most efficient loadout is, it's hard to say, right? So I think 30k is more of a game where you have a vision for your army of like, you know, I want a Terminator squad, and I think power fists are cool. And, you know, I'll throw a chain fist in there for anti-vehicle, all right? Like, it, it, if you approach it, we're like, oh, I'm, uh, what's the most efficient way to build what what's the most efficient number of chain fists and power fists in your squad? You're gonna be stuck forever, especially because the battle scribe isn't gonna get updated in like three months. But anyways, yeah, it's just it's just it's it's not that kind of game. It where you play the game for the game. You you play thirty k because of I think to get the most out of it because of the lore, and you should paint your models. I. Oh, of I course. Should always don't like paying, I don't like pay, playing unpainted 30k like straight up because otherwise you know the game isn't good enough for me to want that like I'd play War Machine unpainted that's fine because the game is good enough for I could get out of the immersion of the game and play the game 30k is it's really in the lore and the models and the game is a good vehicle for that but yeah if you're going back to the original point if you're jumping ship from 40k you know I wouldn't just play 30k because it's not 40k. In fact, you should not play any game because if your reason for playing a game is because it's not 40k, that's a terrible reason. You're not going to have a good time. But play the game for what the game is. So, Because I do see a lot of people, you're right, people saying hey, I'm going to quit 30, uh, 40k sucks, let's be getting this 30k thing, you know, and you realize that the most people play 2500 to 3000 points. I mean, there was a poll recently in a 30k group I'm in, and we'll, the question was, what's the average game size? And it's like 80% of people say 3,000 points. So it's a lot. Oof. It's a lot. Right? Yeah, that's so. a lot. Especially since it's 7th edition rules. God. Oh, yeah. Ta yeah, 10 space rings is 100 points. No upgrades. That's cheap. So, but yeah, that, that's my rant on, on Horus Heresy. One of the first of many, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I'm sure there will be more to come, especially when, uh, who was next? Was it Mechanicum or Custodes? Mechanicum are next, and I, I am excited for that. I actually just ordered a bunch of Mechanicum. So, you know, I got, I already got a good amount painted, not fully painted, like base coated. And actually, I have a squad of, of robots that are fully painted, minus their weapons. Because I kind of lost the weapons, and I had to scour my room to find them. I found them all, but. But yeah, I have some others. I have some tanks. I have some some cyborgs. So yeah, that should be interesting when when that comes up. Well, that's cool. I mean, I know you're already all set for thirty k. You've been on that grind set since what February, March maybe. Yeah, pretty much. I've I've been working on something. I didn't realize this because I got so hyped. Or I really was looking at the new models, but you know, I look I look back and I painted a lot of 30k stuff. I painted like 20 models. It's like two units worth playing some characters of 30k since February. So yeah, I was like, oh wow, you know, the grind was there. Oh, I mean, it's good to have that work. It's good to have that work in mindset. I mean, I try, I've tried. And, you know, I've given up a couple of times here and there. You know, I just paint one model a day just yeah. to get rid of my my hobby of shame. 
right, but, right. You know, can't do it all the time, and I yep. you know fall behind on that, and you know it's just awful. Yep, it's totally like, understandable. It's like I have all these models right here, ready to be painted, and I'm like, ah, I'll do it later. <laughs> but I mean, having having everything painted is nice. It look, it just looks good on the table. Oh, yeah, that's the goal, right? I mean, my models don't get too close to them. <laughs> you look at them from a distance, they look nice. Get too close to them, you're gonna see the space brains with the 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 weird eyes looking in different directions, and it's it's just not good looking. <laughs> but from a distance, mwah, Jeff kiss. It looks great. And that's what I that's what I paint for. I can't. I'm not like John, where he just it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna paint my entire Tyranid army in uh, just, like in one day. Yep, I'm done. I'm like he's a he's a madman. This guy's a robot. Yeah. Yeah, I just kind of it's it's part of my daily routine is paint something. You know, like maybe I'll paint the guns today, or I'll paint the the studs. And you know, if it's a, it's a little thing, but okay, they're done. Yeah. So. But that was a good that was a good rant. How you, how's your hobbying going? Hobby rant time. So thirty k, you know, game launched last Saturday. So we immediately played a game. One of one of my buddies picked up the box, and we had another body. Actually, a couple of us picked up the box. So we had one of the one of us got the rule book, and we we played a game. It was it was super fun. We played two v two. None none exactly. It wasn't like five hundred points per person. It was like me, me, and 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 someone had like a thousand points, and the two others out of five hundred points worth of stuff. So we were relearning the game, super fun, fully painted, cool terrain, and yeah, reactions definitely a thing. Dreadnoughts. There's a lot of dreadnoughts in that game. Well, actually, there's only two dreadnoughts, but still, and them having wounds instead of armor was. Was really was really definitely made them tankier. Out of dreadnought, survived two rounds, getting shot up by four last cannons a turn. Last edition, they would just die instantly, but now they could tank those wounds, which was awesome. Challenges are fun. Always good to have your sergeant fight their sergeant or having a praetor duel. I do miss the challenges. And it, like eighth edition, ninth edition, I miss the challenges. Challenges are fun if you're not like a bitch about it and what i mean by that is like if you know if if your opponent challenges you with their praetor or their chapter master or whatever their demon lord and you accept it with your sergeant just so your praetor is safe it's like okay you're a bitch <laughs> accept that with your strongest guy come on now you know find me 1v1 yeah those Don't... were those were always fun it's just like yeah all right challenge challenge your guardsmen all right yeah you're not, i'm not gonna send out my commissar i'm gonna just send out this guardsman lieutenant he'll fight you see that that's that's fluffy if you're a guard but if you're a space marine it's like come on man really yeah it was just it was just a good way it's just a good way to like reduce damage too oh so. they didn't did, i forget did wounds carry over in challenges not nah, uh they did oh, not sorry spill people. over sorry they don't go over anymore okay i oh, know either way it was just a good way it was always fun. And then it's just like, you don't accept my challenge? Well, guess what? He doesn't get the fight now. Yeah. So that was fun. And yeah, hype is real. Of those four people, were you all veterans or? So two of, us, two of us were veterans that we played a lot. One of us played before, but hasn't played too much. But he played a, a quite a bit before. Uh, one of us is completely new, so. That's good. Yeah. New blood. New blood. A lot of new blood with 30k, which is great. That's what you need. That's what you need to grow. Yeah. I, I actually borrowed some marines from one of us who opened their box. I'm like, hey, can I borrow 10 marines? I'll give you, give you, I'll give you back 10 when my box comes in. He's like, sure. So I, I built 10 B keys. And... I was like, you know what? I'll put the B keys. I don't like B keys, but I'll put it on the squad just just for nostalgia's sake for original Space Marines. And I'm working on those right now. Basic tactical squad. Nice. Yeah, unfortunately, my group, uh, you know, there was 
the host had a lot of work going on, so we weren't mm. able to go over and game at his place. Hobbying wise, uh, I won't lie, I didn't do anything. Didn't hobby at all. Kind of just been relaxing. Ever since I started a new job, you know, it's just like just trying to get into routine and trying to get everything down there. But this week will be different, hopefully. Hopefully, uh, as hot as it is over here, we'll be able to game tomorrow. So I think we're expecting a chance of rain tomorrow. I can't recall. Yeah, I have, I have heard that. Either way, I'll, I'll take the chance of rain over 100 degree weather. So I'll probably get some 40k in. And uh, in terms of project that I'll probably be working on, probably be working on some War Cry. To be there honest. Because I've got a friend who uh, two weeks ago when we played War Cry uh, said uh, he really enjoyed it a lot. So I think uh, I'm going to start playing a lot more War Cry in the future. I'm looking forward to that. I just got to pick uh, which war band. I'm leaning toward the um, Cypher Lords. Or the Flame Lords? Who would you pick? The Flame guys, for sure. For sure? Yeah. You don't like the Cypher Lords? I think they're cool, but the Flame guys... Maybe it's because I have played the... Played with the Cypher Lords for a bit, so I'm used... You know, the the Flame guys are newer. I haven't really seen them much. Alright. Then I guess I'll have to start painting up the Flame Lords. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Other than that, yeah, I'll probably post some pictures of the completed stuff because I think I'm going to just put in a little segment of my painted work at the end just to show progress. My hobby of shame being slowly less. But uh, is there anything else you want to add in before we close out here? Uh, no, that's it. All right, then. Well, I'd like to thank everyone who made it to the end. Listening to our rants made it almost an hour and a half in here. Uh, so if you could just like the video, comment, share it. Much appreciated. Help us get out there. And we'll see you next time. Later, everyone.